Greetings, QCS build fans. Well, here we are again. We're doing another server build. So, uh, we like Epic around here. Epic's great. Anyways, so what we got is um, a lot of the stuff from our last Epic server build, you're going to notice is about the same. Uh, the difference is we got a larger budget for this one this time, so um, there's going to be some changes uh, that you're going to see. So, uh, to get things started, so we have the same uh, platform. We've got our Azeroth Rack Epic 8D-2T board, same as before. Um, big difference with this one is, so instead of a Epic 7282 chip, we're doing a 7272 chip, which is the 12 core 20, 12 core 24 thread variant. Um, so, uh, I was originally actually going to do another 7282 on this. Unfortunately, they were not available at the time. So, yeah. But, uh, 12 core would be perfectly fine. We need more than 8, but we definitely don't necessarily need 16. Um, so 12 is a good happy medium and we'll be perfectly fine. Uh, later on we'll get into the reasons why we went with a 12 core instead of an 8 core. Um, other big difference is we got our Samsung 970 Pro one terabyte drives uh, instead of the 970, <clears throat> excuse me, the 970 Plus drives, Evo Plus drives um, that we did last time, um, mainly because of the fact that we have more budget. Uh, and these are about twice as much as uh, the Evo Plus, but they also have a double the right life extent double the right life expectancy of the previous drives so um yeah so that's that's a that's a big one on this one um the other is let's see we're going with the same back plane as we did last time which is this the star tech um three five and a quarter inch by four three and a half inch back plane that's hot spot um we're going with the same cooler as we did that last time, which is our Noctua NH-U9 TR4SP3. Uh, because this chip is only, it's only like 120 watts, so we'll be perfectly fine, like just like we were last time. We got the same Nimix RAM as we did last time, uh, which is four, four sticks of DDR4 ECC registered 3200. Um, but one of the other, one of the big differences, instead of doing two terabyte uh, data storage drives, this time we're going to do four terabyte uh, Exos drives on this particular unit, uh, which is going to give us a total effective storage of 12 terabytes. And because now we have more budget, we're doing a 16 terabyte backup drive um, in the Exos 16 terabyte. Uh, I've used one of these before in the first one of these machines that we did um, a little over a year ago now. Um, these things rock. Uh, 250 megabytes per second read-write on a mechanical drive. Uh, these things are beastly to, to no end. So, yeah. So we get that for our internal backup drive. Um, and let's see, the other big thing big change is, is we'll move this over here, is we have an Antec high, cool, high Current. Yay! Ah! I finally got one. <laughs> this is my preferred power supply for server builds um, or um, high-end or super high-end gamer builds. Um, is the Antec High Current. Um, I really like these. Um, they're quiet, they're efficient. Um, this one is only an 80 plus gold. Um, the 80 plus uh, platinum um, really didn't need it for this particular build. Um, so that was kind of a cost savings um, for the overall budget. So, uh, yeah, but for this particular machine, we don't necessarily need the platinum um, 1200 watt. So we went with the 
815. But this is definitely the preferred power supply. Now in the last system, we used the EVGA, uh, I actually got the box down here. Oh, the EVGA uh, Gold Supernova, and that has been running perfect like a top. So, um, but of course, like I've always said before, there's only a handful of manufacturers of power supplies in the world. So depending on the brand is gonna depend on what manufacturer you get. So, but yeah, so we finally got an Antec. Yay! Unfortunately, it's the only thing Antec in this whole build. So, um, so if you watched one of our previous videos, you would have seen that I had made mention that we were gonna use a different case uh, in this build. And this, how, although it looks like a Antec 4U server case, it is not an Antec 4U server case. I hate you, Antec. I really hate you sometimes. I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> so I have to settle for the Rosewell uh, RSV L4000. Now, this isn't a bad case. Um, it is very similar in a lot of ways to the Antec 4Us that we've used in the past. However, uh, there are a couple of bad things about this case um, that don't necessarily keep you from using it, um, but it, it, there are things to be leery of. Uh, let's say so uh, So the one bad thing about this particular case is one it is not as heavy um, You would think oh, that's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing for moving it around It's a bad thing because it's not as sturdy now this I've moved it around a little bit here and there inside the shop and as far as Sturdiness note goes it seems to be perfectly fine however one place where Rosewell really cut corners on this machine is on the back and on the inside um, all the edges where the steel has been stamped and cut it is still sharp it has not been smoothed and so if you're a Linus um, and you're a bit of a klutz love you Linus but you are a klutz um, <laughs> you might want to wear gloves while working on this system <laughs> um, because especially back here where the which is where I initially picked it up I didn't cut myself but uh, I, when I pulled it out of the box there is where the mount um, the ATX adapter plate for the power supply is uh, because you can put a dual uh, this does have the cutout for a dual uh, power supply uh, server power supply in this um, but yeah this this and the inside edges in, along with parts of the machine and everything are not smoothed and so they are stupid sharp um, so if you are not kef careful and you do not have a firm grab on this machine or you over squeeze uh, you're gonna come out bleeding so uh, be very careful if you have this if you have this case and you're working with it uh it is sharp on the inside um so you want to be very careful about that um the other thing is i do not like the way the top of this comes off so on the end tag i had a singular thumb screw here in the back you undid that you slid it back about a quarter of an inch and it lifted right off this it slides back and it lifts off however there are four, four screws on the side of the unit there's two here there's two on either side here and two on either side about right here um so that makes actually accessing the inside of this um difficult especially if it's in a rack if it's in a rack and Ideally, it's in a four post rack. Um, you're gonna want this on slide rails so it can slide out so you can gain access to the inside of the machine. Otherwise, to get, if you've got, say for example, you've got several of these or you've got other components inside your rack on top of this um, and this is racked in, you are not gonna be able to gain access 
to these screws to be able to pull the top cover off. Um, so yeah, I don't like that. That sucks. Um, Rosewell, you need to change that. That's, um, that's stupid. Um, just saying. So, um, but going, moving on. Um, so, yeah, I don't like that. Uh, the one thing, the couple of things I do like are here in the front, and we'll lower this down, is, okay, so, this one has the dust, cup, the dust filter in it, just like the other one did. However, um, it's actually stuck in there. Um, and I don't believe you can get this out. In fact, yeah. Well, that could be wrong. Anyways, okay, so it has the dust cover. Um, it's not as removable as the Antec was. Also, the one cool thing about this is, so we got your USB ports are here, so I mean, and here. And then we have the same LED uh, lights on this as we did on the Antec. However, we do not have the... Um, the plexi through holes like we did on the Antec. Um, so you can't see the activity. This is totally closed off. Um, however, the one nice thing about the front layout of this particular machine is we've got four, uh, four or three and a half inch drive base here, four here, and we have three five and a, qu five and a quarter drive bays over here. Now, we're gonna use this side. We're not gonna use this side for now. Um, the one nice thing about these is these are actually four, four, three, three five and a quarter uh, drive bays turned vertically. Um, so you can actually, the back plane that we're gonna use over here, we can actually take that back plane, turn it sideways, and we can actually mount two more of them over here. Now after which doing the math is actually better if you, instead of doing the three bay, or not the three bay, the four bay unit, if you do the three bay, three and a half inch hot swap, which is a two five and a quarter inch bay design, you actually will gain, instead of having eight drives here in the front for these two areas, you would actually end up with three, you would actually end up with nine. So you would actually gain one more drive slot. So, uh, which is advantageous. Is that right? Two, let's see. So I've got three, three, which is six, which is three. Yeah, three times three. Okay, it's Sunday. <laughs> and I'm, I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm tired. Um, brain's not quite kicking on all cylinders yet today. So anyways, um, so yeah, that is one advantage. Uh, they do make this case, um, and I'll look it up and see exactly what model number it is, but they do make this case where it's got three of these, um, three of these bays right here, uh, all the way across. And then they take the IO up here and then they spread it across this top. All the way up here like this um, which if you did did it in that way you would actually have the room for let's see so you would have three oh let's see yeah so you would actually have nine twelve right yeah nine so you'd have twelve hot swap uh, three and a halfs and then you would have one uh, five and a quarter bay left 
and you could do like a hot swap. Um, uh, you could do like an eight, um, an eight two and a half inch to uh, one five and a quarter bay uh, back plane, um, or uh, which Athena makes, uh, which we have in our file server. Um, they make a um, Star Trek makes a uh, one five and a quarter to four two and a half inch uh, hot swap uh, bay system and I can go in that so it would give you more options as far as drives especially if you're going to use this for a NAS or a file server or anything like that um, give it a good way more options um, and then we'll see we'll get into this and we've actually got a um, row of um, two um, of three 120 millimeter fans in this and it has the two 80 millimeter fans in the back just like the Antec did um, so and then we'll get into that we'll do the case prep and you'll see the the pros and cons of this particular case so the pros of this case are uh, it's inexpensive um, these run any on like new egg they run anywhere from about a uh, hundred to 150 160 bucks uh, give or take um, and how it's equipped because um, it's all the same case external case the they just change the front and it depends on how many fans it comes preloaded with um, so you I mean I think the barest minimum version of this machine comes with uh, is like a, right around a hundred dollars um, maybe 120 um, and then the most robust extreme version of this case I guess you would say is it comes in about in a just over about 220 maybe two and a half um, on this case so yeah that's about the price range but it's I mean it's all the same unit it's just like I said it depends on what you know fan rail options and everything it, it comes with um, so but yeah so all right, so again, this will be another multi-part series. Um, yeah, so anyways, like, share, subscribe. Um, questions, comments, concerns, leave those below. And until then, to the bench!